Hey, I have excellent news. This is Adrian for ProductionCrate.com. Today I'm going to give you a little more of a beginner tutorial. We're going to show you how to composite some fireballs. It's going to look like this. If you do it right, it's going to look like this. If you pay attention, it's going to look like this. Let's do it. So the first thing that we need to do before we can begin our composite is we have to hit up the Production Create website. It's ProductionCrate.com and we're going to want to pull down this video drop down menu and come down to fire and explosions and what you will notice is that we have these fire burst elements they're pretty cool looking i think i want to try and find a nice short one so uh to save a little bit of time you can actually preview them by just hovering over that one's really long that one's kind of okay i'm gonna go with number six so let's go ahead and download that and we're gonna go ahead and bring it into after effects where I have some footage waiting for us. So I'm going to scroll through this and find the frame where I snap my fingers, which is right about here. So I'm going to bring in the fire burst and I'm going to have it start right there. Now these are actually recorded at a slower frame rate and then slowed down so that you can use them to make an effect that looks bigger than what these actually were. But that's not what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to make these look about the same size that they actually were in real life. So in order to emulate that as far as time goes, I'm going to right click it and come up to time, hit time stretch, and we're going to change the stretch factor to 50, which is just going to shorten that right up and bring it back to the frame rate that it should be. We just line that up in time. And now let's go ahead and size it up. I'm going to hold down shift to constrain the proportions. That's about how big it should be in the frame. And then I'm also going to right click it, come up to transform and flip it horizontal. And I'm going to rotate it a little bit as well, just so it follows the line that my arm has provided as a guide. Now your first instinct might be to do something like change the transfer mode of this to maybe an add or a screen. But actually I would like you to resist the urge because uh, while it's true that if this was a smaller flame, um, these transfer modes were, would work pretty well, um, for bigger flames like this, they actually stay kind of opaque. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and leave this on a normal transfer mode. And the way we're going to blend it in is through color correction. So what we're going to do is a very... Um, you know, a simple, fun little trick where we're going to add a levels effect to it. The curves effect may give you better results if you know how to use it, but the levels effect is a little easier to grasp. So what we can do with the levels effect is we have these three different handles here that we can use to make things darker or lighter or, um, you know, generally shift the colors around, which is great. You can also, instead of just affecting the entire image globally, you can affect the individual channel. So let's say we go to the blue channel and we try to move that around. We can add more blue to the image, or in this case, I'm taking it away, which leaves us with a much more yellow flame. If we go ahead and add it, there we go. Now it's starting to turn a little purple. So that's great. We actually are going to do that. We're not going to make it purple, but we what we will do is we'll click this little button here, which says show channel and color management settings. And we're going to go through and edit this channel by channel. So I'll show you what I mean. We're going to start with the red channel, which right off the bat is kind of um, a cheat because I have filmed this in front of a green screen, which is not necessary for this effect. It's just, it just happened to be in the room. The green screen has no red in it. That's the purpose of the green screen. So we can't use it as a good reference for color correcting. So actually, I'm just going to go ahead and move this flame over temporarily and compare it to these pixels instead of those pixels. So since we're looking at the red channel right now, we're going to want to change our levels effect to the red channel as well, and then just start moving these controls around until you get something that looks like it matches a little bit better. To be honest, in the red channel, there's not a lot of information to work with in the first place. We'll go ahead and move on to the green channel and just kind of move these around to make, to make it blend in. Move on to the blue channel. Now at this point, if you've made any mistakes, they should become apparent. For example, if you added way too much blue, then this will look blue and you'll know that you made a mistake and you'll be able to go back and fix it. So I'm just going to add some global correction to it to try to see what I can do to make it fit. 
in the scene as best I can. All right, that is looking okay. So let's go ahead and pre-compose that. We'll call it main fire. And we're gonna use this to build up a bunch of other stuff. The first of which will be a displacement map, which we'll use to add a bit of a heat displacement effect behind this fire. So let's duplicate this. We'll pre-compose the duplicate and we'll call it displacement map. We can leave the attributes in the original and go ahead and open up the composition. So what we're going to want to do here is first we're going to give it a tint so these colors aren't getting in our way. And we might go to the levels effect yet again to kind of add some contrast. And then on top of this I'm going to add an echo effect. And if we up the number of echoes a little bit and we change the echo operator to maximum so it doesn't blow out and turn white, you'll see what this does is it gives us kind of a trail but we need these to fade out, which is very easy to do by just turning down the decay. And now what this will do is when used as a displacement map, it'll make it look like our fire is kind of trailing some heat distortion behind it. And on top of that, I'm going to add a vector blur and turn that up just a little bit. And what that's gonna do is kind of just melt all of these copies together so they look like they're all part of the same thing instead of separate elements. Uh, and back in this main composition, we'll go ahead and move the displacement map to the bottom and turn it off. We don't need it anymore. And we'll add a new adjustment layer, which we will call displacement. And of course, we need that above our footage, but below our fire. And to that layer, we'll go ahead and add an effect called displacement map. And for the displacement map layer, we'll select the displacement map we made before. And then just play around with these amounts a little bit. But remember that Subtlety is the name of the game here. So we have our spatial displacement, but we might want to add some blurring to this as well. So that's really easy. We can actually duplicate our displacement map and turn that back on and we'll go ahead and pre-compose it. And we'll call this one blur map. And again, leave the attributes here, but open up a new composition. And to this, we're going to add a new solid in the background, make it black because of the effect that we're going to use to do our blurring We'll look at this as a black and white image and it will blur the white parts and not blur the black parts. So all we really need to do is just add another levels effect to this and just crunch it down so it's mostly white. And maybe add a fast blur just to smooth it out a little bit. Just a tiny bit. Okay, so back in this main composition, we'll add a new adjustment layer and call this heat blur. We're going to add the effect called compound blur to it. And we're going to use our blur map as the blur layer. And uh, just go ahead and turn up this amount until you can start to see some blur. Again, it's going to be very subtle. And the reason I have it on a separate layer from the displacement map is so you can choose where to put it. So maybe you might want to put it above the fire or below the fire and above the displacement, or below the displacement. I actually like it below the displacement, so my blur is displaced as well. But I'm having a hard time seeing it, so actually I'm gonna go back to the, into this blur map, and I'm gonna ease up on these levels a little bit. So we could just get a little bit more blur going. There we go, now you can see that pretty well. So now I wanna add a little bit of glow coming off this fire. And again, um, your first instinct might be to just add a glow effect. That's very easy. However, this effect doesn't really mimic the way light actually works. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just build our own glow that does. In real life, the way that light falls off is called an inverse square. I'm not gonna get into the mathematics behind it right now, but basically um, it stays brighter towards the center and then falls off more quickly than what this actual glow effect is going to allow you to do. So we're going to duplicate this fire yet again, and we're going to pre-compose it, of course, and we're going to call this glow. And as usual, leave the attributes in this composition, but open up the new composition. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a tint to this again so that we're not distracted by the colors of it. And we're going to do a levels again. And this is going to help us control our threshold. In the blur effect, there is a threshold control, which when you turn it up 
will decrease the amount of the image that actually is going to receive the glow. So we're going to just do that with the levels and we're going to just choke out everything that wouldn't realistically be glowing. So the red parts aren't that hot. They're not going to glow. The white parts are super hot. They are going to glow. So what we want is something that looks a little bit like this. And we're going to go ahead and add a fast blur to this. And we're going to set the amount of it to 10 pixels. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change this to a screen transfer mode and we're going to duplicate that layer. I'm hitting control D to duplicate the layer. And then on this second layer, we're going to want to double the blur on it. So we have it as 10 now, we're going to change it to 20. And then we're going to duplicate the layer again and double the blur again. So right now it's at 20, we're going to do it at 40. And we're going to repeat this process until basically we can't see the change that it's making anymore. So if we duplicate that again, we'll change this next one to 80. And if we duplicate that again, if you don't want to um, do the math in your head, this field here is more than happy to do the math for you. So if you just select this amount, go to the end of the number you have and hit times two, it will multiply it for you. So we want to do that one more time, and this will be the last one, because after this, we're not going to be able to really see the effect anymore. So that's our glow, and if we go back to the main composition, obviously it looks really ugly, but we can change that into a screen transfer mode as well. And we need to add a tint to it, and this is how we're going to kind of control the intensity. Let's add a tritone effect. What we're going to want to do is select colors from the original fire. So the highlights, we're going to want to have this yellow color, the midtones are going to be more of this orange, and then the shadows are going to be this red. But I might darken that up a little bit. Okay, now, so this glow looks a little bit intense, and um, you might want to just change the opacity of it, but that's going to make our colors a little bit less intense too. So what I like to do instead is add an exposure effect and move the exposure effect above the tritone and now we can kind of move the exposure down and it will lessen our glow. And we'll do that until it looks good, but it's gonna maintain the integrity of our colors. So now what we wanna do is add some light casted onto the environment from this fire. And this is really easy. Let's just go to the frame where the fire is probably its brightest, which I would say is right here. And we'll add a new solid and let's make it a color from the fire itself. I choose more of more of a darker color rather than the brighter one. And we can go ahead and set this to add. It's very bright right now, obviously. Um, we can go ahead and move it below all of our displacements, but above our footage. And let's go ahead and draw some masks around where this light would actually be. So I do want it here on my face and body. So I'll just draw a mask. My mask is a little bit sloppy, but I'm going to clean it up. And of course, we're going to go ahead and hit F and give that a nice feather. And now I'm going to also go ahead and just do a nice circle mask around where the flame actually is. I'll make it kind of small and feather it out quite a bit. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and make another circle mask in the same spot but make it much bigger and feather it out much more. And this is just another way of emulating that inverse square fall off, albeit kind of a cheap one. So now this is obviously um, pretty bright as well. I wouldn't really want it to be this bright. So if we hit T on the keyboard, it will bring up the opacity control. So we can set a keyframe right there and just bring down the intensity a little bit to something that makes a little bit more sense. And now using the page up and page down keys on our keyboard, we'll move to where the fire first appears, bring our opacity down to zero, and then also move to the frame where it's gone, bring the opacity down to zero as well. Here's what that looks like in context with our other effects. I think perhaps the final thing that I want to do is just add a little bit of glow to this hand so that the fire doesn't look like it's appearing out of nowhere. So again, we'll make a new solid, maybe kind of the same color, maybe add a little more saturation to it. Bring this one all the way up to the top and just add a quick mask around this area. Set it to add as well. Feather that mask out pretty significantly. Now go ahead and add another mask just like before. Feather this one out a whole bunch too. 
So this solid is going to fade out a little bit differently than the other one. Uh, we actually want it to just kind of pop on at the same time the flame does. Maybe not as intense as this. I'll turn it down a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and set that keyframe and move forward just a few frames and turn that all the way off so it's not overwhelming the image. Now I wouldn't normally add sound in After Effects, but you absolutely can. And this is just gonna be really simple. So I'm just gonna show you how we can add a little bit of sound to this fire using Production Crate as well. So I'm gonna pull back up the Production Crate website and I'm gonna click this button here that says Audio which is gonna bring us to Sounds Crate. And I'm gonna go ahead and just do a search for Explosion. And I actually believe I wanna use this Explosion 3 right here. So it has that bang at the beginning. I'm not interested in that, but it also has some nice flame sounds towards the end, if you can hear that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give that a download and bring that into my project. Drop it onto my timeline and we're just going to open up the waveform so we can see it. And so what we want is not this part at the beginning here. You can preview your audio by pushing zero on the number pad. So I don't really want this beginning part. So I'm going to come to the part where the fiery sounds start and I'll set a keyframe for the audio levels and go back just a few frames and just turn that all the way down. And then I'll go forward a ways and turn that all the way down as well, just so it's not playing for longer than we really need it to. And there you go. It probably sounds a little weird on the microphone, but uh, we've just taken our explosion sound effect and then we've repurposed it into a pretty sweet fireball. And here is the final effect completed and rendered. You can hear the audio here without having me play it through my crummy speakers and record it through a microphone. If you liked what you saw today, you can always find more at the website, productioncrate.com, and on our YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe to that. If you want, you can also become our best friend on Facebook and check out our Instagram account. And as always, if you have any questions for me or you want to request a tutorial or some stock footage you'd like me to make for you or something, go ahead and hit me up on Twitter. Um, I try to do my best to reply to everything that is sent to me. All right, thank you guys for watching. Bye now.